Hunting Sick on Georgia's Ossabaw Island, William Hovey Smith, 2017. I'm the author of Backyard Deer Hunting, and this is another of our island adventures. This is Hovey Smith of Hovey's Outdoor Adventures, and we are here on Ossabaw Island, Georgia, about to go on another one of our island hunts. And we've got a new bunch of gear and some new guns, and we're going to go out there and see if we can get some deer and hogs. Uh, we have a chance to go out on a private boat this time, first time ever, so this will get us on the island early, and hopefully we'll be able to get exactly the spot we want to hunt, and get out there day after tomorrow, and go get some hogs, and deer, and stuff. Here we are leaving Kilkenny Marina, and that structure that you see is a lift for lifting the boats up 10 to 12 feet because of Georgia's tides. And we're going out on a good sized boat and we're making good time. And we're approaching the side of the island now. And the, you can see a little bit of my friend Roger Kicklider's back and some of the gear we've got on the front as we're approaching the dock to actually offload our stuff. We now have our camp established on Ossabaw Island. And as usual, I'd like to discuss with you the implementaria of the hunt and also some of the obstacles. Most present with me is I have a head cold. Ah, bad. And so we are well equipped with Robitussin as well as some cough drops and I will make liberal use of both. Missing in my former head cold remedy is alcohol. And alcohol and some of the drugs I'm taking will react adversely. And so we don't do that. We are expecting the first day of the hunt tomorrow rain. So consequently, I have bought a modern gun. But first, we'll look at the muzzleloaders. For those of you who have followed my videos, we have this pistol, which you are now familiar. This is a Ruger O Army, now modified by Dykes Reaver with a 14-inch barrel and a scope, and it has the power of a hot-loaded 44 Special. It can't reach 44 Magnum velocities, but it can do very well on these smallish deer and hogs. Then, we have our now familiar to many of you Moxbury rifle. We tried all last year to get a kill with it. We were not successful. So it is up again, and we're going to try to see if we can't get something with it here. Now I have replaced the forend to reinforce this part which was split, and now we have a fully functional and accurate rifle. And this rifle also has interchangeable barrels. It has a 45 as well as a 54 that slip easily on this same frame. But obviously I only brought one of them so we're shooting the 50 caliber version. Unusual on this hunt is my modern rifle, which is a cartridge gun. And this is just a close-up, of course, the action of the Snyder rifle. This is a 577 Snyder. It is based on the British Enfield muzzleloader in the same caliber produced in large numbers about the time of the Civil War. Uh, no small number of them were used by the Confederacy over here, and it was used throughout the British Empire. With thousands of these rifles available, they wanted to convert them to a cartridge as cheaply as possible. The British Army, if anything, was cheap. And they took an action from an American, Snyder, and they purchased the rights to it, and it is a side-swinging action like this. And it uses an impressive 577 cartridge. Now these cartridges used to be made by Eli, but you haven't been able to buy them for 20 years or better. And these are made actually by hand in Canada where they still use these 577 Snyders in regular competition, being a British Empire country. So with this rifle, 
it'll go out and on a rainy day hog hunt and hopefully get its first kill. So far as accuracy goes, it will shoot a group about dollar size, that is silver dollar size, at 50 yards. So it is plenty capable of taking anything that walks on this island and many things that do not. But we're going to see if we can get it done. Yeah. The old gun was restored years ago, and this is going to be its first attempt, really, to take a piece of big game. I mentioned it is to be raining on the first day. So we have a new set of implementaria here. Frog togs, a rain outfit. All rain outfits are miserable. These happen to be the less miserable of the lot. <coughs> we also have gear guide rubber boots. <coughs> and these we're going to take for walking out in the marsh. And we're on Ossabaw Island and hunting sick and things are not going well for me. I tried it in a deer stand, and as soon as the first burst of cool air hit me, I went in a hacking cough fit that lasted for, well, a couple of minutes anyway, and damn near blacked out. So, uh, once I cool off, uh, that seems to trigger the coughing. Uh, as long as I mow, as long as I'm warm, not so bad. I am taking some cough drop this morning. And where I am is sitting on top of a huge old oak limb. And we're at the edge of a marsh that's not the tidal marsh, but uh, an interior marsh on the island on a thin, narrow neck of land, which is particularly Area 45. Now when the Matthew came through, it did fell some trees, but not as bad as I had expected. Between Matthew, Maria, and Irma, uh, there were a lot of deadfall on the island, such as this huge tree that was blown over. Uh, many of the trails were obscure anyway, and when you have these huge trees dropped on them, uh, you just hardly cannot find them. trail, Graves Road Trail, uh, is getting so indistinct that I hardly can't find it in broad daylight, much less with a flashlight at night. So I uh, got turned around and wasted a lot of time this morning trying to find my way around and find the road and walk off it and walk on it several times. In daylight you can see it somewhat better, but it's still not good. I'm not seeing any hogs. Uh, this area was noted for hogs, but I am finding plenty of deer tracks uh, on both sides of this triangular shape of land that narrows down to just a very thin piece indeed. And at the moment, I'm sitting in a stand of palms because that's what the deer are feeding on mostly right now, are the fruit of these palms, which is dropping. There are some acorns on the ground, but not many. <coughs> <coughs> and that's exactly what happens when I sit down and cool off for a few minutes. Bruh. Uh, obviously, any deer can hear that within several hundred yards. So that is not good. But uh, we are here, and we are trying to hunt, and we'll continue to do that. And to give you a different view of Ossobal that I haven't let you see before, this is a thick stand of palms. And it's almost solid palms. When you go toward the interior of this peninsula, in that direction, you run into huge oak trees. But this is a almost pure stand of uh, palms. And then over on this side, that is actually a neck of this uh, freshwater interior marsh. Uh, it does get tidal flush, so it is connected. And it's out there that I shot a deer uh, last year. So I'm just going to walk up this side of the marsh and see what we can do.
This is our first afternoon and second morning sit on Osaba Island. Uh, we've got a good area of marsh here to look over uh, between two parcels of land. And coming around, uh, you can see that some Spanish moss there. Now I've got my rifle, the Snyder rifle, with its 577 cartridge here. And also, prominently, Hall Sugar Free Triple Soothing Action Cough Drops, which have been sorely needed and often used. Uh, they'll control my cough for maybe 15 minutes at a spell, and then I have a hacking spell, and uh, this isn't any good. Uh, the weather now is beautiful, but yesterday evening, afternoon, uh, we had rain and everybody got wet, including me. <coughs> So, uh, <coughs> that did not bode well. So what we're going to do is to take our stand and just pull it out and take it back and then come back this afternoon with a stew and proceed to see if we can do some deer. They are chasing, they are running, and that's about my only hope is to have a, a deer chase come by me because uh, I can't stay quiet long enough for uh, the usual hogs to slowly feed and approach and this kind of stuff. Here is the Snyder in the Ruger Old Army. I actually had a problem with the Old Army. Uh, it jammed up on me and I'll do a later video on how I clear it. The second day of our three-day hunt at Ospa Island has concluded. Uh, the truck should be coming by to get us uh, in the next 15 minutes or so. Uh, what happened? Well, briefly, not much. Uh, my coughing jags are still in intermittent, although improving somewhat, I think, I hope. And the big man here is yet to speak. It has seen no game in front of it. Whew. Uh, Mostly my fault, I would rather suspect, because this coffin has frankly scared him away. Well, so uh, we're going to keep trying and see what we can do tomorrow. We've got one more day, and there's a part of this Area 45 that I haven't even set foot on. And that's the part, uh, that's the western section across the road. So I'm going to hunt that. <coughs> <coughs> So I'm going to hunt that tomorrow. Uh, a few years ago, I took a nice deer uh, down there uh, with a crossbow. So if we can take deer with crossbow, we can certainly take deer with this. All we need to do is see deer. Burp. Uh, hogs, I haven't seen one, although it sort of sounded like from the shooting that somebody was in a drove of hogs in an area below me, and there are hog tracks around. The hogs that are hanging in the cooler this year are comparatively small. Uh, there was a very large hog kill because of Hurricane Matthew. So tomorrow, last day, we got to get it done. Whoop. This is our third and last day, and we're overlooking the salt marsh on Area 45 on Osaba Island. Uh, and you can see a little island out there that's isolated. Uh, well, <clears throat> the younger guys uh, oftentimes uh, go out and tromp across the marsh and hunt those islands, but the problem is that, that you get up and down these guts, like this one in front of me here, uh, and that's pretty slick and sloggy going, and if you stay too late and you get caught by the high tide, uh, you don't get back. I'm not going to get over the top of the waders. So, uh, it's problematic to go and go and get them. <coughs> it's possible. It's possible, and there probably are beasties on there. But that's not a place I'm going this day. With this wind, I'm going to go back in the interior and then come out here this evening uh, when the tide is up. And maybe something will be moving from the marsh on the mainland 
at about this point or a little further back. We're set up on the third and last part of this hunt on Osawa Island and we're in the interior of 45, particularly on the western end. And there's open woods here and we've got a deer and we've seen his tracks and we've seen his fresh droppings and we know he's a buck and he's in here. And so we're just going to see if we can wait him out. We have very nearly completed our hunt on Georgia's fabled Osawa Island. And unfortunately, uh, we got no hogs and our deer. Now I do have a hog head over here and its future activities will be to make Brunswick stew. And I also have a backbone in this cooler that we're going to use to test one of our cleavers with. But it was a reasonable hunt this year. Uh, people got a fair number of creatures, uh, both hog and deer, although fewer hog than usual. Hurricane Matthew killed several thousand, they think. But there are hogs here, and the deer population was apparently not much impacted. Uh, people did get deer. Now, I had a particular challenge this hunt that I came here with a cold. And, well, what you do, guys, you know, you only go on this hunt once a year. It's not something you can put off or postpone. And if you're sick, well, more times than not, you come sick. And I did, and with very poor results. I had some over-the-counter cold medications that I was taking, but sitting out there on the sand and going hack, 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 hack all the time wasn't very good towards killing deer and hogs. Nope. That didn't do us much good at all. So consequently, on the third day, I was some better and was able to do a reasonable amount of hunting for a duration of time so I could kill an animal. But, well, by that time, they were pretty well spooked and long gone. As a matter of fact, off the island, out of the way. It's a quota hunt. And come out here and do it, and you will hunt in one of the most beautiful places in North America. But now, this is Hovey Smith, reminding you to hunt what you eat and eat what you hunt. Be legal, be ethical, be safe, goodbye, God bless, and see you next time. This is a pile of droppings that that buck I was sort of chasing left me uh, just before he left and went out to swim out to his island out there where he is quite safe, at least from me. Now, these are cookies. Uh, these cookies were about as effective as a cough drops, in fact, even more so in suppressing my cough. Uh, that was an accidental discovery. Besides backyard deer hunting, I have other prize-winning books. Now, these include extreme muzzleloading, crossbow hunting, and practical bow fishing. I also have a series of e-books on muzzleloading, including shooting and maintaining your muzzleloader, hunting with muzzleloading shotguns and smoothbore muskets, and hunting big and small game with muzzleloading pistols. Now, residents and non-residents alike may apply for these hunts on Osaba Island. These are quota hunts. For more information on my books, blogs, and more than 650 videos, go to my website, www.hoviesmith.com. For information on Hovey's Knives of China, you can see the reference below. Good hunting and good eating from the outdoors. Goodbye and God bless.